All right, folks, we have returned. It turns out that the new case actually started today, and I thought it was a Thursday. And it's Hot Mess. How appropriate a title. For me, anyway. I thought the new case is going to be starting for another day. Now, if you normally ought to have said that the earthquake made the financial district unrecognizable. But then I remember that artists taking advantage of this tragedy for self-promotion. And I see that money rules, rules things here as ever. I bet it's not the last we've heard from this mirror cat. But to be frank, my mind's on something. Or someone else these days. You've unearthed more clues about the disappearance of my girlfriend, Zoe. But they seem to suggest it might have been a kidnapping. I hope that this won't turn out to be true. But I'm really worried, Matthew. At this point, I'd even welcome a good case to distract me. It just so happens that I have one for you. Matthew, an old friend of mine is called. There's been a murder at her establishment. I need you to go check it out. Alright, Chief. Senior Trooper Matthew, Detective Jones, thank you so much for coming. This is a catastrophe. Miss Kiki Shea, right? When our chief told us to help her friend, I admit I didn't expect it to be at a strip club. Not just any club, I run THE male strip club in town, and my best dancer, Voodoo Vince, collapsed dead on stage tonight. Vince's body is just over there. Please solve this as fast as you can. Thank you, Miss Shea. We'll check out the body and be back in a few minutes to count ask you some more questions. Let's do this, Matthew. Not my best place to check out a murder. Not my ideal place, anyway. As my local news comes back, I'll please disregard all that noise. There he is. There we go. Of Hawaii, but it's not a whole lot to generate rain. But we still found a few showers on the big island, especially as we head. And I'm going to level up. You know, those showers are falling apart, so as we head through the night, we won't see a, a huge amount of up rain. Up to 452. Matthew, that guy's dead, all right. Very unclothed and dead. Thanks to Kiki, we know our victim's name is Vince, or Voodoo Vince. From the foam around his mouth and the greenish tint to his face, I'd say he's been poisoned. And what's that, Matthew? This bar napkin has a message on it? You'll choke and die for what you did, Vince. Well, if that doesn't sound like a threat from the poisoner, I don't know what does. There are some pink crystals on this napkin. Let's collect them to see if they can tell us anything about this killer. And you're right, Matthew. We should have a talk with Kiki to get more information on her dead employee. There is a level up. Scattered showers in central and leeward spots. So it's possible tomorrow, but again, I wouldn't expect it in most spots. 35 for east, that's down. Definitely going to need some cards. So instead of just saying like or comment, I'll send a card. I'm just going to go to shorten it to cards, please. That's what I like to do. That's probably what I'm going to do from now on. Because sometimes I do get likes from people. West and, North and uh, they end up not on my team. Please, this is case 11. Yep. So we'll start the autopsy. I do plan to speed this up. Probably because Friday is Good Friday, but I'm going to ask Kiki Shea already. 
Miss Shay, can you tell us exactly what happened tonight? Well, Vince ran up on stage for his act, and then suddenly he started clawing at his throat and then collapsed. The audience panicked, of course, but I made sure that nobody touched his body and asked everyone to leave before calling the police. It breaks my heart to see him like that, all pale and lifeless. It's hard to believe this could happen. Miss Shay, is there anything you can tell us about Vince that could help us catch his killer? I don't know what to say, Senior Trooper Matthew. Vince was a nice guy, my star dancer. Women were lined up around the block to watch him move. Vince was so strong, so virile. He practically lived at Money Mile Gym, and now... Thank you for your help, Miss Shay. If Vince often went to Money Mile Gym, then Matthew and I will head over there to see if we can get any leads. Okay, I see a clue already. Torn poster. Broken window. Speaker. Box of supplies. There we go. Okay. This sure is a nice gym. With a view like that, I'd be inspired to pump some iron more often. Or maybe not. Anyway, I don't know what a rich poster can tell us about our victim. But I trust your instincts, Matthew. Let's put it together. And if you want to search for that box of gym gear, go right ahead. If anything, I can grab one of those protein bars to munch on. Right. Sure, Jones. Believe me, I am going to get some more stars, so sit tight, folks. Alright, I got 24 stars. I got all of the stars before going back to this because I was able to unlock both crime scenes. I was able to unlock all crime scenes and got all five stars to the crystals. Matthew, now that you've got a sample of the pink crystals on the killer's nap, killer's threat, let's shoot it over to the lab. Three hours. I do plan to speed up the autopsy, but not right now. Now the torn poster. This case is pretty inquiring. Matthew, that seems to be a show poster for our strip club. And it features our victim. He's dressed as an angel, apparently starring in a show called Angels and Demons. There's another guy on the poster dressed as the devil. Let's find out who just who he is. Just 
send it after that. Send it after 10 minutes, but that's all right. One, two, three, four. And I got the nine in time. Thunder Day. It seems the guy on the show poster with our victim is a stripper at the same club. He goes by the name of Thunder Dave. If they did a duo together, they must have known each other pretty well. Let's go have a chat with Thunder Dave. Let's see what he has to say. Hi, Mr. Thunder Dave. We'd like to ask you some questions about Voodoo Vince. He's been murdered. Don't I know it. I was backstage waiting for my next act when I saw Vince fall. I nearly fainted myself. We found your show poster, the Angels and Demons one. You guys were close, we take it? Vince and I were like, Vince and I were the best of bros. And that duo act we had sure killed it with the ladies. I mean, they would make it rain whenever we did it. Honestly, there's no one else I would have preferred to have done it with. Vince was one hell of a performer. It won't be the same here without it. Jewelry box. Matthew, I didn't expect a jewelry box to work among that gym stuff. And you're right, it has our victim's name on it. Let's open it up. Look, that looks like a pretty expensive bracelet. There's a note written on the open lid, but you can barely make it out. I'll get your dressing kit. the notice on the victim's bracelet box reads here's a little sugar from your mama and it's signed N. Butler given that message I doubt this is from the victim's actual mother let's go talk with this N. Butler Matthew I'm sure the front desk can tell us where to find her Nicolette Butler We must hear about the dreadful murder at the Maneater tonight. We take it you were there, Miss Butler? Oh yes, I'm there most evenings. I just love watching the boys strut their stuff. And Vince was one of my favorites. It was devastating to watch that beautiful talent and those beautiful abs go to waste. We found the bracelet you gave Vince. That's a fancy gift to be giving a guy in a club. Oh, I give all the boys little gifts as tokens of my affection. They all call me Mama. But I suppose the club might be closed for a while now, with poor Vince gone. This is too terrible for words. No more thing I have to do? No, that's it. So I'll at least let the pink crystals run its course. I'll see you guys when that's done. See you all. Okay, folks, you have returned, and let's get the results of the pink crystals. <clears throat> no, Matthew. In my day, there were no strip clubs. People just gathered around for a nice cup of tea. 
When was that? The 15th century? Because you won't convince me there were no strip clubs in the 60s, Rupert. Can we please stop talking about stripping? Just tell us about the sample from the killer's threat. Well, the pink crystals you sent us are actually rep-colored sugar. The kind used to decorate cocktail glasses. In the sugar, we found traces of cranberry juice, gin, limoncello, and raspberry liqueur. All the ingredients to make a pink thong cocktail. I'm amazed you can pronounce that that name with a straight face, Amir. But I suppose an evidence is an evidence, Matthew. It's an evidence. Matthew, I must confirm that your killer drinks pink thongs. The killer better wash their back now that we know that they like their pink, their thongs pink. I never thought that there was such a drink like that. There's a whole new world out there for strippers. Let's go ahead and speed this up now. Matthew, have you ever been to a male strip show? No, Martin, can't say that I have or want to. Oh, Jones, don't be so quick to judge. It's really quite a spectacle. All that testosterone and sweat. Yeah, you're not really selling it. And besides that, the main spectacle here is the dead guy on your table. Seth Fry. Well, I confirmed that he was, in fact, poisoned to death. To be precise, he ingested a lethal concentration of botulinum toxin, which paralyzes the nerves, shutting down the whole body. Interestingly, while botulinum toxin can cause a deadly disease called botulism, it's also used in various plastic surgery procedures. For typical practice, a plastic surgery patient is prescribed post-op home treatment to keep the procedure fresh. This means your killer had a fair dose of botulinum toxin for personal use following their surgery procedure. So our killer gets plastic surgery. Matthew will wipe that plastic grin off their face and we lock them up for murder. Well, Matthew, this case is certainly onto a fleshy, I mean, flashy start. Our victim, a male stripper with the stage name Voodoo Vince, was poisoned and collapsed right in the middle of the show. Everyone has only good things to say about him. According to Kiki, his employer and the chief's friend, he was her best dancer. And his colleague and client also gave him rave reviews. They were all at the club tonight and... Matthew, sorry to barge in, but this couldn't wait. I found your victim's car. And we'll see you guys for chapter two of Rock. And we're back for chapter two of Hot Mess. See where we stopped at was Kathy telling us that she found the victim's car. Our victim's car? How? Where? I was checking your victim's credit card information. When I found his last payment was through a garage for repairs on his yellow Mustang. I thought you might want to look into that. Definitely. Thanks, Kathy. Matthew, let's go check out that garage. Of course, this was the first. This case offers a first that you saw for me. You saw me get all, get all stars. I got the first star here, then the first star here, and then I spent the rest of the time getting, getting all stars to wind up at 24. Wind up with 24 stars, and then I use them, and then I use seven stars to handle all to handle all of the tasks that require stars. 
food, like special pay. In time you have some of your friends and teachers with probiotics. You have a list of things. None of those things say you don't go around the warehouse looking for somebody to have. There we are. Exactly Wallet. You nope, you have a list of things. It's got the first star. To make sure you get everything you need. Because at Ace, we have our own list. And great service is at the top. Never ending classics, Ace Valley is back at Olive right. Garden. And I did get all the uh, you want of all the classics you love. Wow, this must be the victim's car. Since Kathy mentioned a yellow Mustang, it sure is swanky. No, no, Matthew, I'm not getting distracted. Of course I noticed that wallet you found. As a matter of fact, this wallet looks pretty fancy. Let's look through it. And this tablet is locked. I'll leave you a locking to you, Matthew. I don't want to risk locking it. Nationwide. Just search for Spectrum or Cable Wi-Fi in your network settings. Spectrum Wi-Fi. Okay. And let's take a look at the wallet. First. Almost went to the tablet. VIP card. Matt, you found a VIP membership card in that wallet? It's for the Man Eater. That's the name of the strip club our victim worked at. Worked in. There is no name on this card, but Kathy will surely track down its owner. This will be 12 hours, and I will let this run its course. Okay. Let's see. One, six, six, one, six. There we are. That's one. Six, six, seven, one. Seven. Seven, one, six, nine, and one. Here we are. This tablet you just unlocked has a victim's yellow Mustang registered on it. And apparently the mechanic in charge of repairs is searching Mayland Park. Matthew, this Mayland Park must have interacted with the victim when he brought in his car. Let's go talk to her. Is it in this case? I think that we have a pretty decent chance. And we are going to need you to testify. Stand up there. I'll let you what are you snooping around the shop for? You got a car to fix? Actually, we're investigating the murder of Voodoo Vince. We know you worked on his car, so... Oh no! Vince has been murdered? We just celebrated our one year anniversary! So you and the victim were a couple? Yes, we were dating. We met when he first brought, in, brought his car in here for a tuna, and the next time he returned with flowers. He was a real gentleman. And you were alright with his job? Of course. He was very open with me about it, and I knew I had nothing to worry about. I was the only woman who mattered to him. I used to joke that he had great taste in women and cars, but now he's gone and our story together was just beginning. That's no good. Now I'll let the VIP card run its course. I'll see you when that's done. And we have a turn. Let's get the results of the VIP card from Kathy. Matthew, I hear your victim used to be a male stripper. 
Reminds me of my bachelorette party. Ugh. Well, I'm glad Alex preferred going to an arcade for his bachelor party. Oh, so that's what you guys did. Alex never wanted to tell me claiming what happens at a bachelor party stays at a bachelor party. <clears throat> anyway, changing the subject, what about that VIP member card for the strip club? The man here outsources the management and storage of their customer data, so I had to comb through that first. So once I got my hands on the data, I just had to compare the numbers until I found a match. A certain Christian Bateman. Christian Bateman? Why does that sound familiar? Oh, you're right, Matthew. He's that venture capitalist we met when the earthquake unearthed the cold case. Come on, Matthew. Let's go ask Mr. Bateman that. Let's go ask Mr. Bateman the naked truth about his visit to the visit to the strip club. I think in these kinds of cases, it's good to know that all certain kinds of people don't get ignored. Senior Trooper Matthew, have you kind of proposed an investment? Do be quick. Time is money. Mr. Bateman, pleasure to see you again, too. We're here to return your wallet and ask you a few questions. Oh, my wallet. That canceled all my credit cards. Well, your wallet contained a VIP membership card to a certain strip club. We... Say no more. I don't know what my clients wanted to. I might indulge in a pink dong, but not in the entertainment. And tonight beat everything. A murder in the club absolutely ruined my networking night with my clients. So you were there. Did you know the victim Voodoo Vince at all? I just said I don't associate with male strippers. I knew his name, and outside the club, I only saw him at the gym sometimes. That's all. Now, if we could end this talk of tasteless spectacles like strippers and murder, I'd be much obliged. Ugh, I can't stand that guy, Matthew. He really has no empathy. Sorry, let me focus. He mentioned seeing the victim at the gym, so we should take another look. about that there are three clues in this in this crime scene <clears throat> fancy cars exclusive gym memberships looks like there's good money in stripping but I think I'll stick to my day job wise choice anyway these angel wings look familiar you're right Matthew they're the ones Vince was wearing on his promo poster. But the wings are all battered. Could someone have been trying to sabotage Vince's act? Maybe that brown substance on them will tell us. Meanwhile, this torn paper doesn't look ominous to me, but if you think we should piece it back together, I'll get the tape. And this agenda has the initials VV on it. No doubt it belongs to our victim. Let's unlock it. To the angel wings first. Uh, 
here we are. Let's put that sample you got off Vince's angel wings under the microscope. It might tell us who ruined our victim's stage prop. Sculpting Sin Cream. Matthew, the brown residue on the victim's angel wings was something called Sculpting Sin Cream. Apparently this product is used to enhance details on the body, like abs. I can't believe there's a cream for abs enhancement, but you're right. I can think of someone who'd use it, Thunder Dave. Not that I was looking at his abs, mind you. They're just kind of hard to escape when you talk to him. Anyway, Dave was Vince's duo partner. Why would he try to sabotage him? Let's go make him spill the beans. for a pink thong, Senior Tripper Matthew? I made a bash to pour on myself for my act. Now we may as well drink it all. No thank you, Dave. We don't drink on the job. Speaking of, can you tell us why you sabotaged Voodoo Vince's angel wings? I... Ah, shoot, Senior Tripper Matthew. I should have known you'd find that out. The truth is, Vince was my nemesis. I've been dancing here for a few years, but then I took a few days off to fix my nose after a bad fall and Kiki hired him as a replacement. And Vince turned out to be good. Too good. He started taking my prime slots. Not to mention we had a big stripping competition coming up here and there. Coming up and there was no way I'd let him win. Those fat stacks of cash are gonna be mine. Dave, if you decided to strip Vince of his life to win a contest, the only poles you'll be dancing with will be your prison bars. That doesn't even look like a very fair image after all. I hate to even imagine that. No way he's going to pick up women doing that stuff. It looks like our victim uses, used this agenda to take notes about his clients. He wrote, Cheryl Danberg, good tipper but grabby hands. Sophia Lewitt likes the leopard dawn. Do we really have to read it all? Oh, you're right, Matthew. That last client, Nicolette Butler, never again. Nicolette was that strip club client who gave Vince a gift and called herself the boy's sugar mama. Miss Butler failed to mention Voodoo Vince didn't want to deal with her anymore. Let's go ask her what happened. Miss Butler, you didn't tell us you had fallen out of grace with Voodoo Vince. Oh, you know how it is, Senior Trooper Matthew. There's almost nothing to explain. Thanks to my plastic surgeries, I don't look a day over 25, but my charms didn't work on Vince. Vince refused to become one of my special boys, said I was too intense. You must have been quite annoyed about that. 
It's all loss is what I say. I like my boys the way I like my pink dogs. Sweet and available. Vince wasn't the only pretty one around. Plenty of other fish in the sea. And they love their mama. A case like this will make me happy when it's over. Hearing things like this is way too... I don't know what the word is. Seven. Matthew, this paper you taped together is covered in handwritten notes. Botulinum toxin three drops ingested 15 minutes before death. Wait, botulinum toxin? That's the poison that killed our victim. Matthew, you're right. These notes are unquestionably from the killer. The notes also have these strange footsteps drawn all over them. I have no idea what this is about, but maybe Gabriel might know. hours also. I'll get the results tomorrow. So for now, this is Matthew. See you then. Alright, we have returned and let's get the results of the killer's notes from from uh, Gabriel. Matthew, did you know that dances evolve and are shaped by time just like languages? Fascinating. I know I'd be fascinated to hear what you found out about the odd drawings on the killer's notes. Of course, Jones. And that's why I talked about dancing. These strange markings are dance steps. Tango, to be exact. It looks like your killer was memorizing the steps to an advanced tango routine when they scribbled their murderous plans. I, uh, may have once tried to take in a tango class and failed miserably at it. But I can recognize the moves. Great! Now this killer will have to pull more moves than their usual tango to get away from us. Matt, we may as well do a recap of this investigation as we head back to the precinct. I can't get it all straight in my head. Our victim, Voodoo Vince, collapsed poisoned during his stripping act. From everything we know so far, he seems to have been a nice person. His girlfriend said only good things about him and was open-minded enough to accept his unusual profession. Even when there were even when there were women like Nicolette Butler, who made Vince so uncomfortable with her act with her attentions that he refused to dance for her. Meanwhile, Vince's dancing skills drove Thunder Dave to sabotage his props out of professional jealousy. But would Dave have resorted to killing him? I don't know, I... What the... Whoa! I didn't mean to turn there! Hold on, Matthew. Oh my god. And we'll start chapter three and find out what Jones crashed into. It. And let's start chapter three of Hot Mess. Oh, Matthew, are you all right? I was so wrapped up in this case, I didn't realize 
I didn't realize I was driving us right into that tree. Luckily, I only got a bump on the head. It's probably best if you drive next time. I'm sorry. The car's front is banged up. Ah, the chief's gonna kill me. We probably need to bring it to a garage. We're not too far from Malin Park's garage. Let's take it there. Well, Senior Trooper Matthew, you're lucky. The engine's intact, but your radiator's busted, your battery took a hit, and your hood wants replacing. I'm going to have to keep your car a few days, and I'll need you to settle the bill up front. Matthew, please allow me. It's my fault we're in this situation in the first place. Yowza! That bill! I... I need to take a breather. Matthew, why don't you take another look around the victim's car while I negotiate this bill with Miss Park? See a clue. This thing will hurry up. It's a clue. Here. search went better than my negotiation with Miss Park. I always forget how expensive repairs are. It's okay. I've already had to eat instant ramen for a month after a bad financial decision. This is the price I pay for my negligence. Anyway, that looks like the victim's car. The victim's cell phone. But it's locked. I'll let you work your magic. This bag has the victim's name on it. It must be his. Let's search through it quick. Hold on just a second. Alright, I got a few stars, so let's get this. So let's get the phone out of the way first. Two, 
three, two, two, eight, and three. There we are. That's number two. Now the last one. Eight, eight, three, two, five. There we are. Great job unlocking the victim's phone, Matthew. Let's send it to Kathy. She'll come through it. Test you found the victim's bag? And it's positive. Matthew, let's reveal the faded writing on the note ASAP to get all the details. note on the pregnancy test says Vince make your choice and it's signed Malin. Malin didn't tell us she was that she was pregnant. Come on Matthew let's go ask her more about this. Your car isn't ready to be picked up yet. I still need to... We're not here about the car, Malin. Tell us, are you pregnant with Vince's child? Where did you find that? In his bag. Now you told Vince to make a choice. What choice was that? I gave Vince an ultimatum. Me or stripping. What? But you told us he didn't mind his job. That he was faithful to you. He was, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Women fawned over him all the time. Everywhere we went, they just throw themselves at him. One of his groupies, some Nicolette, even followed us to our tango class. She kept on groping him right in front of my eyes. Last week I found out I was pregnant, so I gave him the ultimatum. I just wanted us to settle down and be happy. But now Vince is dead, and my baby will have to grow up without a father. And I'll let the victim's phone runners course see when that's done. And welcome back, folks. It's now time to get the results of the victim's phone from Kathy. Matthew, your victim sure didn't seem very technologically advanced. He pretty much only used his phone to make calls. I suppose technological acumen wasn't exactly needed in his job. Indeed, most of the calls your victim had recently made were the usual stuff. Take out appointments, calls to grandma. But there was a private number your victim called many times in the days before his death. Each time without getting an answer. I was able to find out whose number it was, and it belongs to one of your suspects, Christian Bateman. Christian Bateman? You're right, Matthew. He told us he didn't know the victim. He's got some explaining to do. 
Because we've taken things to the next level. Our beaches could have been more perfect if we did that in our show. But we did. And our controls are not closer to the action. Mr. Bateman, why don't you tell us you had no contact with the victim when his call history proves the opposite? I'm a busy man. It may have slipped my mind. I don't have time to spend on dead strippers. But I suppose I must tell you, after briefly meeting me at the club, that gigolo tracked me down to ask for an investment. An investment? In what? The man has some cockamamie idea of opening his own strip club slash puppy cafe blend. Said women would love it. Was going to call it abs and labs. As if I would invest in something so harebrained, I'd turn him down immediately. But he just kept on bothering me. He even found out which plastic surgeon I go to and showed up at my appointment. He was embarrassing me. Well, Mr. Bateman, Senior Tripper Matthew better not find out that you killed Vince to get him off your back. Wouldn't you like to get the kind of deep, rejuvenating, uninterrupted slumber that leaves you feeling refreshed? You're right, Matthew. This is the first we've heard of Vince wanting to leave Kiki's strip club to open his own business. We better see Kiki and ask her if she knew about this. I've had terrible experiences with sleeping pills, both relaxing sleep, both the alert with no after effects. Miss Shay, were you aware that Vince was planning on leaving your club and opening his own entertainment business? Oh, shucks. Yes, I knew. Let me just put my pink thong down and I'll tell you all about it. Vince told me that he wanted to leave and start this abs and labs thing a month ago. It came like a bolt from a clear sky. Vince was a nobody when he started out here. I was the one who took him under my wing and taught him all I knew, who to talk to, what clothes to buy. I even got my private tango instructor to give him and Thunder Dave lessons for their duo. And how does he repay me? He decides to leave my club and become my competition. The nerve of him! I was so worried I had to book a Protox to touch up with my plastic surgeon to smooth out all these extra wrinkles he was giving me. Miss Shay, you may be our chief's childhood friend, but if you kill Vince, we won't get any wrinkles from putting you in jail. Now she's in the right. And so is Thunder Dave. Matthew Jones, what is it that I hear about you crashing a squad car? Nothing, nothing, Chief. It's all under control. I hope the same is true about the case I've sent you to investigate. More or less. We found out that the victim stepped on two people's toes in his attempt to launch his own business. While his girlfriend wanted him to get out of the industry altogether, so to have so to have a quiet life of her and her future child. And our next step is clear. We should return to the scene of the crime and strip it in search of clues. I see a clue already. And yes, it is. And it is recording. Oh, there we are. Show props. Locked chest. No, Matt. Give me an idea. 
eight seconds. I must ask you exactly what you think is the most I got the first star already. And what did he tell you? Matthew, that bottle says botulinum toxin. It's the poison the killer used to murder Vince. No question, the killer dropped this here, and they seem to have left a silver liquid on the bottle. Let's get a sample. And if you think we should search that chest of props, let's do it quickly. We're hot on the killer's trail. I know it. As a matter of fact, he mentioned the secretary leaving early. Anyway, I'm certain that would never discuss a plan. What if he didn't know or care that there was a third party present? Let's send the sample you collected from the killer's poison bottle to the lab at once. I'm afraid you'll have to change the ending, too. Any suggestions? You might write about a respected me. Yeah, and leave it to Jones for actually crashing National one of the squad Institute cars. One of the hosts of a prime time industry. And learns that it takes a lot of audience to fall because of some bombastic younger man. Lack of attention. <laughs> Luckily, when I drive, I have a good, I have good attention span. There we are. Listen, Helmut didn't even want you up here. The only reason you came is because Kevin insisted. Now come on. Inside that prop box were two cocktail glasses. You're right, Matthew. They are decorated with pink sugar crystals. These glasses must have had pink dongs in them. We know our killer drinks the cocktail. And who else would have a reason to hide the glasses in a prop box? These glasses could be a vital clue, Matthew. Let's send them to the lab. And I'll see you guys when both of these are done. And we've returned. Let's get the results of the silver substance. We'll put a killer behind bars with these two clues. Matthew, do you think I'll look good with makeup? Magazines keep telling me that eyeliner for men is super trendy right now. Amir, I'd rather hear about the silver sample the killer left on the poison bottle. But that's what got me wondering about my style. The sample you sent me was in fact eye makeup. The sample consisted of water, aluminum compounds, silicone, mica, and some tiny reflective particles. In other words, glitter. Your killer wears glittery eye makeup, and they must have rubbed their eyes and transferred some onto the poison bottle. But this flashy makeup clue will definitely narrow down our search for the killer. I also have uh, another game open, but uh, I'll deal with this a little later. Matthew, I know you're pressed for time and you won't get and you don't want me to go on rambling as one sometimes does as as one sometimes does as one gets older, I admit. That rambling thing, you're doing it right now. Right. Well, your cocktail glasses were a great find. 
I can tell you they were using a final toast between the killer and the victim. You're saying the killer had a drink with Vince and put the poison into his glass? Exactly. Both of these glasses contain rem remains of the pink thong cocktail. The one also had botulinum toxin and your victim's DNA. Could you get any of the killer's DNA off the glass off the other glass? I did, but alcohol did a real number on it. All I can tell you from the killer's DNA in the glass is that it's a woman. Well, this lady murderer doesn't have much left of her freedom. We're closing in on her. It's gotta be that Nicolette girl. Oddly enough, there's someone with that same name at, at the place I work. The school I work at. She's a teacher. Let's put someone under arrest. See. Yep, it's Nicolette Butler. Nicolette Butler, you're under arrest for the murder of Voodoo Vince. The murder of Voodoo Vince? Oh, Senior Trooper Matthew, don't make me laugh. It's too painful with my Protox injections. And the botulinum toxin used in those injections was used to poison Vince. This is Money Mile. Everyone uses Protox. It's only natural that people want to look good. Well, you made a mistake in writing the poison dosage near your Tango Step instructions. Tango Essential, and so am I. You have no proof I did any of these things. Actually, we do. We found your DNA on the pink thong glass you toasted, with, you toasted Vince with before you slipped poison into his drink. So I guess you have it all figured out, Senior Trooper Matthew. Think you're very clever? Fine, I did kill Vince, but he had it coming. You killed Vince because he rejected your advances? Oh, don't be silly. Vince was just one man. I can take his refusal, although I don't understand it. But Vince didn't just scorn me. He went and told all the other boys to do the same. None of them would serve me anymore. That's still hardly a reason for murder. But okay, why did Vince do that? He claimed I was a dangerous stalker. He said that about me. About the mama. He told him I pried into his personal life too much and was too handsy with him. But why are the goods on display if I can't touch them? I pay the money, didn't I? Mama gave the sugar. The boys are mine to do it as I please. And Vince dared turn them against me. You... They're humans, not things. You don't own them no matter how much money you spent at the club. Nicolette Butler, you're under arrest. Nicolette Butler, you stand trial for the murder of Mr. Voodoo Vince. How do you plead? Innocent, Your Honor. Any woman would have done the same if the hottest boys in town wouldn't glance at her anymore because of him. I assure you most women wouldn't. You killed a man just because he ruined your fun? My fun? Mama is nothing without her good looks, her sugar, and her sea of men. I couldn't let him stand in my way. Miss Butler, your total lack of regret for your heinous crime is despicable. I hereby sentence you to 25 years in jail. Is it a co-ed jail? Please make sure to put me near handsome young convicts. That woman is something else. To think access to male eye candy was important enough to her to kill over. In any case, you handled the case with aplomb, Matthew. When Kiki came to me for help, I knew you were the right person for the job. Thanks, Chief. But I swear, if I ever, if I never hear the words glistening abs again, it'll be too soon. Amen, Jones. That's enough to make that's enough to make me shake. So we take a look at the other ones. 
Christian Bateman cleared after clue three. Malin Parr, she was cleared from the start. Kiki Shea, no glitter on her eyes. And Thunder Dave, it's a guy, not a woman. It was Nicolette Butler. And I'll see you guys for On Shaky Ground 5 6. And we're back for On Shaky Ground 5 6. Let's start it right now. That was quite a case, Matthew. I have to admit, I kind of wish I had partnered with you to interrogate these male entertainers. You wouldn't say that if you'd met the remorseless killer who saw men as objects to buy and murder at her leisure. Anyway, I guess you should go see Malin to check on the squad car's repairs. I still can't believe I crashed into a tree. Oh right, I did hear the chief grumble about something of the sort. You better get going. Senior Trooper Matthew? Sorry to interrupt, but do you have a moment to talk? Miss Shay, did something else happen at your club? Oh no. This is a more personal matter. It concerns Diane. I'm intrigued. Tell you what, Matthew. Once you and Jones are done with Malin, I'll come with you to talk to Miss Shay. Talk, or we'll check with the car first. Hey, Malin, we've come to see if our squad car is ready. The car is good to go, but I'd like to speak with you first about Zoe. Zoe? Zoe Kusama? You know her? We were both in Gawa, the Grimsboro Asian Women's Association, and I found a photo of her in your car, so I'm guessing you knew her too. Yes, we were. We were close. Do you know anything about our disappearance? We're still looking into it. That's actually why I wanted to talk. One day after our Gawa meeting, Zoe left her notebook behind. I kept it, thinking I'd give it to her later, but she never came back. You have her notebook? You should have given it to the police the moment you heard she went missing. Where is it? Somewhere in the garage. I just haven't. I just haven't gotten time. Gotten time to find it for you yet. You're welcome to have a look. Oh, and one more thing. I made an error calculating the cost of repairs on your police car, Matthew. Here's a refund. Oh, well, thank you very much. That'll make Jones happy. I see it already. And there it is, the notebook. Yes, Matthew, I haven't forgotten what the Chief said about me not working Zoe's case. But, Glo but Gloria's busy and every lead counts. See, this must be Zoe's notebook, but the notes inside are all faded. I'll get your dusting tape.
Wow, that's a lot of chicken scratch. Who'd have thought that Malin would actually turn out to be a pretty helpful lead? Well, it's like I'm only going to get one energy out of this, basically because of the slow computer, but that's alright. I got plenty of energy to burn. I could probably do five elite cases, or maybe even more, with all that. Drat! This is definitely Zoe's handwriting, but it's all in code. I can't read any of this. Right, we have an expert in codes at the precinct. Let's send these notes to Gabriel, Matthew. Nine hours, and let's see what Kiki wants. What Kiki Shay wants. Matthew, you may not know it, but it's Diane's birthday today, and I wanted to do something special for her. A party for the chief? How lovely. What did you have in mind? Oh, something very simple. Some cool tunes, cake, and maybe we could use some of the guys here at the precinct to join in on the fun. By fun, you don't mean you want them to strip, do you? Because I'm not sure... No, no, nothing as risque as that. I understand Diane is your chief, but maybe a little fun choreography. It'd be such a treat. Well, I... Well, I guess we could ask them. What would you need for the party? First of all, we need music. I have an old mixtape from when Diane and I were in high school, but I can't find it. It's at the club somewhere. Sounds like a job for Senior Trooper Matthew. Let's head to the club. Thank you. Here's Senior Trooper Matthew. Don't forget your prop for the dance number. That's probably the most risque I'd get if I were a cop. I wouldn't wear anything... Very revealing. And I thought the idea of male entertainment was out the window. Let's see if we can find it. Washing up tub. That's a crazy name for it. Fun years. Yara. gonna get some extra help but that's okay I can't even get up to first place anyway you think Kiki's cassette could be in this tub it's the last place I look but let's go through it let's go through it That tape you found on the tub has seen better days. The tag on it says Kiki and Dee Dee, Rockstar Princesses. This must be the cassette Kiki was referring to. I'm guessing Dee Dee was the Chief's childhood nickname. Kiki's not going to get much use out of the cassette in this state. Luckily, I'm sure Kathy will know how to salvage it. Let's 
to you guys when this is done, at least you are finished. Six hours or nine hours? See y'all then! Oh, hi! Welcome back. So let's get the results of the damage mixtape right now. Matthew, thanks for the nostalgia. This mixtape reminded me of my first encounter with Hard Rock. I listened to my dad's Stingray's cassette tape for hours. I think this one must have been in the water, though, because retrieving the recording took a while. But retrieve it, I did. And I also transferred it to this USB key because, you know, we're not in the 80s anymore. Perfect. I hope there's something in there our boys could dance to Kiki. To Kiki wants them to put, the, to put on a show for the chief. Oh my god, then I'm going to want to see that. Anyway, don't worry. The tape was packed full of party tunes. Alright, but they're still going to need to learn how to dance. Good idea, Matthew. Maybe we can get some help from Thunder Dave. Uh, let's talk to Thunder Dave right now. Howdy, Senior Trooper Matthew. Are you here to experience the rodeo of your life? Ooh, my. No, we're asking. We're here to ask for your help coming up with a dance routine for our Chief's birthday party. Oh, yes. Kiki's mentioned that. I've got just the perfect routine for you guys. I used it to win the Lords of Lust contest two years ago. Um, our dancers will be pretty inexperienced. Don't worry, I'll adapt it. They don't call me Sheriff Sexy for nothing. Leave it to me, Senior Trooper Matthew. Just relax and grab something to eat. And we'll go ahead and speed up this, even though this is only another 39 more minutes, but I do want to get out of here early. Matthew, I'm afraid Zoe's notes paint a bleak picture. What was in them? Did Zoe write about Trey Warner, the man who we think got kidnapped at the junkyard? Yes, but not only him. Those notes show that Zoe was actually investigating an entire string of what might be kidnapping. You mean there were more? I'm afraid so. Her notes go over the disappearance of about a dozen people over the span of six months. People have been disappearing for six months and we had no idea about it. How is that possible? They were all outcasts, homeless people, marginalized, people nobody would take any notice of except for a social worker. Even Zoe was not actually able to prove these disappearances were criminal. When people have no fixed address, it's hard to prove they're missing. So what you're saying is that we've got more questions and still no idea where Zoe is. I'm so sick of this, Matthew. I, I need some time alone. Matthew Jones may feel defeated right now, but finding Zoe's notebook wasn't a waste of time. Every new piece helps us complete the puzzle and get closer to finding her. You'll see. Hey Matthew, sorry I stormed off earlier, I just needed some time alone. I know everything we find about what Zoe was doing right before she was kidnapped is useful. It's just, sometimes it's hard to keep up hope. She's been gone so long. Jones, you owe it to Zoe to keep up hope. Think of all the things you've learned in a matter of weeks. You're right, but I just don't understand. Why did Zoe never tell me about the homeless people whose disappearances she was investigating? I'm a police officer. I could have helped her. And now we don't even know if she and they were kidnapped or what. As I said, it's a lot to process, and if you've got anything to take my mind off things, Matthew, I'd appreciate it right about now. Then I've got exactly what you need. Matthew, I've recruited some of the guys to dance in Kiki's show for the Chief's birthday. I won't tell you who's participating, but you might be surprised. All that's left to do is to lure the Chief to Kiki's club without spoiling the surprise. I vote we pretend that there's another crisis at the strip club. That'll definitely get her to come with us. That sounds like something we can do. Come on, Matthew. Let's bring our best acting when we talk to the Chief. Oh, this should be good. Let's lure Chief Diane Parker. Chief, Chief! What's the matter? Kiki's in trouble. She needs your help. And we've got a feeling it's even worse than a dead stripper. 
Oh no, Kiki! There's no time to lose! Let's get a Kiki's Club now! Ooh, this could be an actual emergency. We'll see. Low control. You're protecting your one loss ratio, are you? It's okay, Captain. So you stay those judgments as cloudy as this for us if the war is And the fact that Michael did when he fantasizes kill a perpetrator. Uh, it's not my fantasy of the state that protect the state from oh. this. The kids had choices. He could have walked away, told the teacher, told a cop. Instead, he murdered. Later, later. Boom! Thirteen. And no help. Matthew, I don't see Kiki anywhere. Are you sure she's here? She says she would be. Hey, what about this remote control Matthew picked up? I don't see how that will help us find Kiki. And yet my intuition is telling me that Kiki left this remote control here for us. Let's unlock it, Matthew. Black life can't hurt you now. You don't understand. Dang. I can't. You're a victim. No, it's not. I told you what happened. I'm staying in jail. Please. Please. No. A surprise. The chief. Kind of looks like Monopoly and Code. The remote control seems to be working now, Chief. I still fail to see how this will help Kiki, but... Matthew, what's going on? Surprise! Happy birthday, Dee Dee. Kiki, you're alright! Oh, I should have known this was one of your tricks. And it's not over yet. We've got a trick for you, so sit back and enjoy. Time to shine, boys! <laughs> Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear chief! Oh, God. Hello. Happy birthday to you. Oh, gosh, Ramirez in the cake. Bravo, bravo. Is it over? Is it safe to look? Has Ramirez put on some clothes? Yes, the coast is clear, Jones. As for me, I am impressed by their performance. Diane? I looked for you at the station. They told me to come here. Oh, Matthew, meet my husband, Ray Parker. Ray, my man put on a little show for me. It was delightful. I saw. Although, you can leave your tie on would have been my pick for such a performance. Nevertheless, I've kind of picked you up for the five-hour violin recital. I got a center seats. How thrilling! Matthew, please thank everyone for me. This was a lovely birthday present. Ray, bring on those violins. How sweet that the chief's husband took her to a concert for her birthday. Although I'm sure it wasn't as entertaining as the show we put on. Entertaining is not what I would have called what I had to sit through. Oh, Jones, don't be such a stick in the mud. Well, I guess the dancing wasn't so bad. Still, let's never talk about this again. Speaking of spectacular shows, Matthew, are you going to do the one tomorrow? The show? What show? Oh, please don't tell me Ramirez is turning this into a full-time job. 
No, Mira Cat, that earthquake artist, her big exhibition's tomorrow. The artist says she's going to use actual lava in an art performance. Actual lava? Is she nuts? Matthew, we better see Mira Cat's performance for ourselves. Something tells me things are about to get heated. see them bring back the food rewards though to go along with the sticker packs. So this will be case number 12, this is the last case in the district and this will be released on April 5th. April 5th, that is a Monday. Wow. So it looks like I'm going to get to go to this next case. A, little, a lot sooner than usual. Oh, happy day. Oh, no, that's Thursday, rather. What are you doing now? And just after checking that, looks like we're back to the uh, Thursday. It's like it's back to being the case released on Thursday. From now on. So, let's go ahead and. Or Good word, these cases are. Oh, case number one. Although we had to say farewell to Nathan Pandit, unfortunately. And that was Savannah Blake a couple cases ago. Yes, the victim had been shot while lying in the bed. Any signs of struggle? No. Of course they No. They didn't get any stickers for this case. But thankfully, thankfully at least the strippers have their clothes and some clothes on anyway. But anyway, that's going to do for this case. Thank God that's over. And I'll see you guys, and I'll see you guys on April 5th. See y'all then.